Uh, we're going to call to order the um, meeting, the uh, Community Development Agency, CRA meeting. Um, I would like to do the pe Pledge of Allegiance. Will, Kim, will you lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance? Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I will do roll call. Councilmember Davis? Here. Board Member Jackson? Here. Vice Chairperson Kellum? Here. Chairperson Morrison? Board Member Willis? Here. All right, now we'll do the approval of the agenda as written with any amendments. Council, any changes to the agenda? I wonder if we need to move presentations down until they appear. Yeah. I have presentations. Kyle's here, oh, we can yeah. start with yeah. Kyle. Okay. I think perhaps what um, Board Member Willis is saying, maybe um, since we got word that Kimley Horn is running late, maybe we get to business item number five before we go to right after two. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's exactly what I was thinking. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we're going to move so let's, item let's number do two five. and five. Two up and two. five, and then pick it up after that. One, two, five, three, four. Okay, do we have to? A motion would be appropriate. A motion? I'll make a motion to adjust the, the meeting schedule to one, two, five, three, four. I, uh, uh, second. <laughs> <laughs> you got me confused when you said the name. City Clerk? Count, uh, Board Member Davis? Here. Um, four. Board Member Jackson? Four. Vice Chair Kellum? Four. Chair Morrison? Board Member Willis. Four. All right. Uh, now we have public participation. Is there anyone out here that would like to speak and fill out a card? Nobody online. So I guess we move on. Um, Shouldn't should we be uh, allowing Kyle to give his presentation? Oh, I'm sorry. I passed right over. I, I, know, I know, you know. I'm sorry, Kyle. Yes. Give him one more bite at the apple here. So. <laughs> yes, Kyle, please. Such a great presentation, too. Thank you. All right. Let me go here. All right. Hello. All right. It doesn't have a little light on. Good evening, CRA board members. Um, I was going to try to be quick, but instead I'll try to stretch it out a little bit. Um, so with the, the fiscal year ending in September, I am uh, going to give a, a rundown of the fiscal year 23-24 CRA property improvement program um, that was implemented starting last year. Um, very successful program, as I've, I've said to you guys, any, any chance to listen. Um, we uh, have, have had a number of applications and we're starting again. October 1st, the new cycle opens, so um, we expect to get a lot of applications again. Um, Neil, will you go to the next slide, just a, a rundown of the numbers? <clears throat> so in total, we got 24 applications, um, 19 of which met the criteria, uh, that criteria being um, rest, they encouraged restoration, renovation, beautification, and removal of slum and blight, and that they were visible from the street, these improvements. Um, so the only one of the five that didn't meet the criteria were, it was a re-roof, so it just didn't meet the criteria. The other, the other ones just weren't visible from the street. So um, we had encouraged a pre-application meeting, strongly encouraged, but of course people will go ahead and submit anyway. Um, this time we're re requiring a pre-application meeting, so that's one of the changes we made. Um, so across the 19 applications, nearly the entire $50,000 budget was spent, um, a total of 49796 was committed, so coming to an average of about 2600 per project. Um, 44796 was was dispersed. Um, there are two projects that 
weren't completed, one of which we're actively working with the applicant on. Um, they're getting a building permit. The other one, I think, I mean, at this point, by the, by the, we haven't made contact with them, so um, I don't think that one's gonna happen. So um, 40, about 45,000, give or take. Um, the largest grant was for about 4,000, 3950. Um, which was a 100% match for a painting voucher of a residence. Um, it was a corner lot, so they had a lot of area visible from the street. Um, and the smallest was $985, a 50% reimbursement for a landscaping project. Um, the breakdown in total, nine paint vouchers, six residential facade applications, two commercial facade applications. Um, and so I've got a couple of before and after pictures, uh, starting with the VFW, if you'll go to the next slide, Mia. So here's the before picture. So Plaques were what they, they focused on. So in the after picture, you can see they, uh, they did a really nice job with their plaques. And um, really, I think everything on that wall is, is new. Um, and they had a, a very nice unveiling that they invited city staff to. And they were, they were very appreciative the whole time. It was a really, really great project. Um, you know, the reason we do things like this. So uh, the next project is the Christ Lutheran Church. Um, they painted their exterior with, with new colors. It looks really nice. Uh, they did some really nice landscaping as well, but you can't really see it in the before picture. And the Google Maps Street View, you couldn't really really capture it, but um, a lot of that landscaping is, is new. And they also did uh, the entire property they kind of redid, but it, it wasn't visible from the street, so the grant really only uh, took care of this, this portion. Um, the next project, 7015 and 7017, uh, Orange Avenue, yeah, Orange Avenue. Um, they had their screening redone. You can kind of see here. They uh, had some some tears and breaks in their screen, and they also got a paint job. Um, if you go to the next slide, you can see the new the new structure. So they worked together. Um, the, the third resident on the left side of the picture there was not involved, but um, these two, seventy fifteen and seventy seventeen, coordinated there their grants and their projects, and I think they saved some money that way. So um, that was very nicely done. And then the last one, this one, the, the Google Street View picture on the left really doesn't do justice to how the condition it was in before. The pictures that were provided do, do a better job. Um, they got power washed, they got a fresh coat of paint. Um, this is just, this is kind of representative of the projects as a whole, it was a lot of things like this, paint, painting, fresh coat of paint that made it look a whole lot better. Um, and then this applicant was one of the people who was very, very appreciative and made it clear that they couldn't have done this without this grant. So, um, and I think that is it for the before and afters. I didn't wanna take up too much time, but. Um, so, the, uh, a new scoring criteria has been added um, just to really put an emphasis on the, on the consistency with grant purpose and guidelines. So restoration, renovation, beautification, and most of all, removal of, of slum and blight is, is really the primary purpose of the program. Um, we would love to get some more commercial uh, applications this year. Really, it was only the church and, and VFW um, this past year that, that did it for a, a commercial one. But, um, and we, we also, in, in conversations with residents, uh, we've emphasized that project, projects utilizing low impact development techniques um, usually landscaping are, are accepted and encouraged. Uh, so we want, want to focus on that as well. Um, I haven't had as many questions leading up to this new cycle. So we'll see what it looks like. It may be, I think the intent is that they would roll in a little more slowly. This time they, on September, or on October 1st, 2023, we got, you know, 15 applications that we had to look at. Ideally we'll get a couple applications that we can review and, and meet with the applicants. Um, so yeah, the new application cycle begins on October 1st, 2024, $50,000 again in the budget. Um, as you all may be aware, my last day with the city will be Friday, October 4th. Um, so the process will be in the hands of whoever takes over my position. Uh, this project was really a highlight of my, my time here. I got to talk to a lot of residents I wouldn't have otherwise talked to. Um, it was a lot of fun to see the before and after of what, what people were doing. So um, yeah, if you guys have any questions, Feel free to let me know. Just want to say thank you, Kyle, for the presentation. And uh, it's really good hearing the feedback because when we sought this opportunity, we didn't know how it would end up. And it sounds like it was a good experience for yeah. you and the Overall community. Positive, yeah. 
Thank you. Response. Mayor Pro Tem? Oh, yes. I, I'm just really happy that this turned out as good as it did and, and so many people took advantage of it. Um, I know at the beginning last year when we implemented this, we out of the budget, out of the fifty thousand, we sent out postcards to mm -hmm. businesses and residents. Are we going to do that again to encourage? Yes. yes. So those are going out. I mean, tomorrow or the next day. Oh, great! So, because it's October first is the first date of the uh, the applications, so mm -hmm. they'll, uh, they'll they'll get them in the next week or so. And you said that you had there's a um, pre meeting mm -hmm. before they complete their application so they're yeah. not wasting their time or your time. Right. Yeah, so depending on what kind of project it is, um, it'll be me or whoever the planner is, maybe our director and building if they need to be. They're really just involving anyone who might need to be involved um, just to make sure we nip anything in the bud, mm -hmm. you know, right up front. Um, overall, the, it would, the applicants did a pretty good job following directions, but I think having a pre-application meeting would be really helpful to just cut down on some of those minor things that people missed or we missed. Awesome. And then is if someone got a grant last year and now they're going to do something else, can they reapply? Only if it's if you did a paint voucher last year, you could do a facade, like a landscaping or something like or that. Lands and vice versa. Mm -hmm. I can't remember off the top of my head if it's three or five years. Otherwise, you'd have to wait three or five years. Okay. Awesome, great job, Kyle. Thank you so much for, and and Zach and whoever else was involved in this, really great thing for our citizens. So thank you, Councilmember Willis. I just want to thank you for the time you've been with us, and for your good work. Um, one question: Have we ever seen the need to audit any of these? Not yet. Um, we were very thorough in making sure that we had, you know, the contractors provided invoices on their, you know, letterhead and um, canceled checks. And that was maybe probably the biggest thing was getting people to provide both sides of a canceled check and, you know, their statements. Um, we were very thorough about that. I mean, I'm sure it could happen, but this year at least we didn't find the need. One, one other question. Do you feel there's enough process documentation to pass on to the next person to hit the ground running? Yeah, I, I probably will need to do like an SOP, a step-by-step -step of, of what we're doing. And we do have a whole guide. Um, the guide's not really, not perfect, I think. So I think a lot of it will, uh, I mean, I learned a lot by just doing it, but I think that will be necessary to, to pass it on the next person. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. No, I just think this is a terrific program and uh, I just hope more people will take advantage of it. I thought the, the building with the core surf shop, because they painted, did you see their blue? Yeah. So I thought maybe they'd been one of the recipients, but no, they, I they didn't weren't. see them on the list. A lot of, a lot of blue. Yeah, a lot, a lot of, of blue. Painting, painting their buildings blue. For whatever. So hopefully we get more people involved and thank you, because you've done a great job and you will be missed. Councilmember Jackson. Thank you, Kyle, for everything you've done. We're going to miss you, and we appreciate all your help. Um, I think this is a great program because it really helps residents. Mm -hmm. And so I'm happy to see the success with it and your work in the guide. I'm, I've been looking through it. So uh, I know you've taken a lot of time to put up this together. So thank, thank you. you so much. Thank you. Thank you. John. Mayor. Kyle, all I want to say is your professionalism, your communication, your coordination, um, just it was a pleasure working with you in our meetings. You never left out any details. You crossed all the T's, dotted all the I's. I, I'm going to truly miss you. Thank you for everything you did for the city. Thanks. Yay. Thank you, Kyle. I, I want to echo that too, Kyle. You built this program from the ground up. It's really your baby, and you did a great job on it, and we're all going to miss you. I miss you guys, I guess. Let's talk about that Eagles game. <laughs>
Bad. Awesome. <laughs>
that brought down the contingency in the CRA to $301,000 roughly. So that contingency will need to be um, allocated towards a project. My, my recommendation would be that that be allocated towards the Presidential Street's construction. Uh, Kinley Horn will be here tonight to talk about that, and they do have a, uh, an opinion of probable cost for that. And I think we're going to want to focus what attention we can towards getting Fillmore done as the first presidential project if the, uh, the, the council and the board want to do that. Mayor. Yes, thank Board's you. Chair. All right, board. We have, um, and, the, and these changes are reflected in the, in the budget book under the agency funds or the CIP. John, do you want to go over any details on that? No, actually, um, based on, I, I had watched the uh, meeting from the first first hearing, uh, based on the actions the council took with the 3.2, with the millage, and then, of course, moving Oak Lane over, whatever. No, everything looks uh, very clean, uh, clean to me, and, um, Seems like um, their actions on the third help finalize the uh, CRA budget. I don't have any other comments. Thank you. Um, CRA in the capital and the summary page for the CRA. I'm trying to get to that. Um, we have another page number for the CRA, CIPs. The summary? Yes. What is it? Um, 121. Thank you. Okay. So there is uh, eight projects and I'm just going down the line, presidential streets, the Oak Lane improvements, the Canaveral Park concession stand, the fire rescue, Nancy Hansen wreck, 100,000 and Canaveral City Park redevelopment at 12. Two and a half million, but there's another 300,000 that we can either assign to one of those projects. Yeah, it's currently um, just contingency, but we should uh, allocate that to one of the projects. Well, <coughs> Okay, but the contingency would be shown because there's no contingency here, and this, that's not a CIP, nor would it be. But what was the contingency? Um, the well, the contingency now, based on the changes on the hearing on the third, is 301. So what we would do, just like we've done in past years, is when council has a when there's a contingency, um, and it's already been expressed in this meeting that. You know, depending on that money is going to go towards the presidential streets. So as the year goes on and costs incur, and what have you, since it's right within the same fund um, finance, we'll just do an internal transfer um, approved by me and the city manager to take takes those funds um, and uses them towards presidential streets. So it's all self-contained. So if we go to page fifty-seven, which I think. That is exactly what's three. Mm -hmm. So our book shows three million nine hundred fifty-seven thousand. This one shows three million. Oh, the screen shows three million eight hundred fifty thousand. Mm -hmm. um, the contingency here before was four hundred eighteen thousand, and then it went to three hundred one. Okay, I see. Thank you. And then the di the difference in the top on the revenue was three nine that lowered by a hundred thousand. So okay, right. 
council or a board? <laughs> Any other uh, questions here? Or comments or? I, um, I have a comment. On, in our regular agenda, the, the item for Oak Lane is on there. And I just wanted to clarify, I spoke to John and Todd, that the, um, because in the financial impact it says 500,000 will be ARPA funds and the remaining 6,571 will be CRA. Well, we talked about that and um, the ARPA, it, it's gonna be all CRA for Oak Lane. Yeah. And um, can you explain? Sure, sure, we can talk about that. And uh, as Vice Chair said, this is an item in the council agenda for the approval of Oak Lane. The financial impact statement there talked about the CRA portion of it and broke that even further down into where that CRA money is coming from, which is the ARPA um, that was been proposed for that. And that's completely fine, we can do that. Um, but the the request was, does it need to be designated? No, it doesn't need, need to be designated to this project or that project for purposes of council approval. It's just in this area budget. But if it if it pleases the council at that time to just specify that that five hundred thousand goes into say presidential streets rather than Oak Lane, we have no objection to that. It's all still money in the same fund. So where that changes for the count uh, the board, uh, where that changes basically is very little. In other words, if you looked at the CIPs and it says the source of funds, the only thing we're gonna change here is it'll say for um, Oak Lane, the source of funds is the CRA funds, and for Presidential Streets now, 500K of the source of funds will be ARPA. So that's, it's again, that's a very slight change. The source of funds and that ARPA could be used on anything there. So um, at uh, Vice Chair's request, uh, we talked to her and um, yeah, it makes sense. We're happy to do that. Yep. So well, that's Thank the only thing we'll just- I just wanted we'll adjust. to clarify that. Yeah. yeah. Okay, that's all I have. Okay, board, any other questions at this time or? Uh, it, my, my only thing was just making sure that the 418,000 was in the contingency before. Yeah, it was the, the capital outlay on page 57 of the book before was two point Two million two hundred ninety-three thousand, but and then the contingency is four hundred eighteen thousand, um, and then the CIP shows two point five. It the the CIP is actually increase in that same budget book, and. Yeah, Mayor, that 300K is, was uh, in the professional services uh, previously. That's why the three, 300K has been moved down, and that's why it says um, 2.5 million. So it was moved out of professional services and moved into the, what line was it, Joey? The, into the presidential, where was it? It is in professional services. Is it in, it's in professional services, okay. Uh -huh. All right. Yeah, I see 400,000 in professional services. I'm on page 57 of the, um, the budget book. Right. Just, and then separate from that is the 2.2 or 2,293,000 just below total capital outlay. Right. So is, I would think that you should, could take the total capital outlay of 2,293,000 and that number should be roughly the same as on page 121 the CIP summary. So the CIP and if that's the so professional services 
is in the presidential streets. Right. I see. I see what you're. I see what you're saying about the two point. So the summary is shown two point five, and the the um, capital outlay is shown two point two on page fifty seven. Let's see if there's the. Uh, Yeah. Oh, okay, the 50,000 mayor is not included for the grant program. That's not a CIP. That's not included. Unless it should be, let's see. That would make them further apart. Let's, let, me, let, me, let me take a look at that. Yeah, the, the 50,000 is not reflected. It, it, it's in the capital outlay, but it's not reflected in the um, CIPs. In the CIPs. Yeah. And was it, do we have last year's budget? Let's see if the 50,000 was included in the CIPs last year. Let's see how we did that. Because we can make an adjustment to that if that's the case. But I think. John, that would make. Did it, was it in there? Mm, no. No. So the, the grant program part of it is not included in the. Um, that's not included as a CIP. But there's still a difference of the two. That five, increases the difference. Yeah. Let's add those up, Joey, and just add those up and see what that comes to. Because the numbers, as we look at them, are the same except for the 50K. So it could be a 50, 16, 550. 112, 315, it should add up the same. Let's see. Through. Oh, well, I could see that the presidential streets on the summary is 1550, mm -hmm. uh, but the presidential streets on the, the, new, the new budget that, that was done is the 1.250. Okay, there's where the there's where the there's where the difference is. And um, that let's see here, CR3. The survey outreach is on there. So what we could do is the 1.5 for the presidential streets, which includes the survey engineering design outreach, mm -hmm. then probably what we need what we need to do is to make that we could move the 300k the 300k from the contingency needs to be moved up to make that 1550, and then we'll balance. There's still a storm that was in there too. Yeah, that won't that won't affect that won't affect this. So that that's the disparity when 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 y'all were doing the you know changing over the presidential streets and the civic hub or whatever, the summary showed the one five, and when this page was redone, um, this was set at one point two five zero. So we'll move the three hundred k up like we were going to use for the presidential streets anyway, right? At, and make that the one five five zero, and then that fixes those that page. No, I believe. I believe how it's in is correct. Do we, do we want? That 1.25 on CR3, 1.25 shows up there. Right, but 300,000 mm -hmm. is included in the 300,000. Oh, oh, okay, okay. So mathematically, it does that up. Okay, so Mayor, here, here's, mm -hmm. here's the twist on this then. Is that 300K mm -hmm. is in the professional services uh, number of operating. So what we'll do is we're going to change the CIP to reflect 1250, okay? Because the professional services is where the 300k is for the um for the design um that's an operating expense. Is that the one we're doing with Kimley Horn or whatever? I believe so. It's yeah. just serving. Does that make sense to council? 
So the 300K is included on the CIP, but because of the transitions and what has happened, the professional services is actually 400K, which includes that 300K. So the CIP should show 1250 and we'll make that adjustment and then that will balance. Okay. Does that make sense? Yes, I can see that. I just wanted to make sure that the, because we didn't have a contingency, we basically freed up from the previous CIP to the current, we freed up 300,000. Right. But right. we had already had a $418,000 contingency. Yeah. So is that 300,000 going to add to that? Um, and yeah, the number. Yes, that's part of the overall budget. Yes. So the total CIP on page 56 says 2,593,000. And then on 57, it says 2,293,000. Um, and then the page, I guess, what is the total CIP? Is it the 2,593,000 for this year? Oh, for the, to the total of the CIPs listed? Yeah, 2.293. 2 okay. There's three totals, and only one of them say 2.293. And that's for the capital outlay, which are the, the CIPs, which do not include the grant program. Okay. All right. So, so basically, all we have to do is change the CIP for presidential streets to 1250 because the 300K is in the professional services. So it's, it'll, it'll balance. Thank um, you. I, I just want to point out to, uh, to the board also is that um, the, something we do is we usually, we do provide you the memos, the processes of provide memos. Is, and as we've had extra meetings here and things constantly change, and um, it's, we could have these discussions and caveat those changes, but one thing we don't do is we don't continually give you a whole new budget if there's just been a couple changes in between meetings because, the, first of all, cost, that would be a waste of cost, but also that's very cumbersome. So that's why we would provide memos or, uh, you know, or to show you you know, what actually transpired. So I just wanted to let you, let you know that. Um, but um, Joey did do an, another whole budget here for you while I was gone. Uh, the, and just the only thing not included there is the changes that resulted from lowering the millage, uh, which affected the general fund contingency from 800K to 300K. So, okay. Thank you. All right. Council, or uh, board, any other questions? Make that adjustment. None. We got resolution number here. ERA 12. Yep. So we, we went ahead to item number five, new business. <clears throat> if we're ready, looking for a motion. Make a motion to adopt resolution number CRA 12. I'll second. Got a motion by Council Member Willis, a second by uh, excuse me, Board Member Willis, a second by Board Member Davis. Any further discussion? Here, you good? Okay. Seeing none, City Clerk. Board Member Davis? Four. Board Member Jackson? Four. Vice Chair Kellum? Four. Chair Morrison? Four. Board Member Willis? Four. All right. Resolution number CRA 12 passes. And we now, uh, the amendment takes us back to 3A now? Yes, sir. And Kimberly Horn is here, sir. That's great. So this is uh, old business item 3A, approved the fiscal year 23-24 budget expenditure and amount not to exceed $223,000 for engineered design of Fillmore Avenue improvements within the boundary of CRA to Kimberly Horn and Associates and authorized city manager to execute the same. Okay. And are we taking up uh, B here as well? Yes, sir. B is just um, a component of this because there's a portion of the design that is outside of the CRA, and that would be $76,900 of the design. So if, if the board so chooses, you can approve A and B. B does appear on the consent agenda of the council as a conforming item if the board chooses to that option, sir. Thank you. Okay. Board? I 
Kimley Horn is ready to do a presentation to recap um, both of these three and four, sir. Let's, you recommend starting with that? Yes, sir. That sounds good. Let's go, oh, I'm ready. Come on up. Hello, nice how are up. you? Good to see you. Scott and A. Kimley Horn, uh, 200 South Orange, Orlando, and I apologize for the, but I think we have a fellow board member that felt our pain a little bit too. So <laughs> uh, we did make it safe and sound. Um, uh, Matt Wanzer will be the project engineer for the project. He's here as well if we need to answer questions in that regard. So I, I did quickly take a quick minute. I, I truncated a couple of slides so we can come back to some things knowing that we've been delayed here a little bit. And I'll try to keep this uh, sweet and simple because I think that this is all consistent from probably two presentations consistently. We just want to make sure that we're recapped, we're all on the same page, and then we give you the information to open uh, to ask any questions as need be. Uh, so I, I, the two projects that we're going to look at really kind of is the, the one, and I can stop and we can talk about Fillmore before we go on to the undergrounding phasing component of the Civic Hub, which be a joint later topic, right? So we're just going to stop at Fillmore? Yeah, we've got items three is just Fillmore and four is for Civic Hub. Right. Yep. Okay. So I'll stop after this or, or actually council, council or board members, you'll interrupt as you need to uh, if we need to clarify anything. Um, so again, it's just really uh, talking about Fillmore. Um, I, I left in a couple of highlights for us to remember that, that both of these projects, and this project specifically, are focused on stormwater improvements. Certainly, we are improving the public realm as the Presidential Streets Master Plan has identified and initiated. It's, uh, it, this project has gone through specific other studies that the, that the city has been a part of looking at the entire Center Street Basin, the problem areas that you see in, in pink and the orange circles, and the entire basin as a whole that has significant flooding issues. Uh, we've also, I've just left in this other consistent thought that all of the improvement projects, almost all of the improvement projects are founded and rooted in stormwater improvements. Uh, and how do each of these layer on top of one another so that we are solving the big issue of flooding, especially in the Center Street issue, Center Street District. <clears throat> and so that, yes, we are we are improving stormwater. We are uh, uh, not eliminating flooding, but we certainly are trying to do a multiple prong. It's not a silver bullet on any of these projects. We're going to layer these improvements on, and we've been talking about that, how we can create... Um, a underground storage and volume, as well as a fill more streetscape, a walkable pedestrian corridor that is improvements along Fillmore. Remember in April when we were here and we talked uh, to council, I'm not sure if we were at the, the CRA, but we really talked about why Fillmore, and it's for those exact reasons. It's because it's a central east-west street. It's in the center, maybe to the north portion of the entire stormwater basin. We think that we can hydraulically connect it where we have the highest incidence of flooding, especially at Fillmore and Orange, and connect that over to where we have some potential volume uh, areas to uh, improve the overall district uh, or the, the drainage district. Uh, again, it's, it's central to what the city has been doing to redevelop not only your own properties, but it can incent development for future uh, redevelopment of the private sector as well. 
We certainly will have a, the ability to create a shared use path that creates interconnectivity from the east to the west uh, and, and even include over to uh, the beach end and to share facilities like City Hall here. Uh, and other studies have proven and or suggested that Fillmore would be a tier one improvement, meaning the highest and best use of the city funds to uh, make the biggest impact, especially as it relates to stormwater and flood abatement. Again, not flood elimination, but flood abatement, and this is a big part of that opportunity. And then as well, it it's, will improve major stormwater improvements downstream of the Center Street Basin, which your stormwater um, pump station will be a major part of those improvements. So that's where we ended up. We talked to you about specifically, I'm gonna come back, show you this is exactly the same that we presented in April and we've been had consistent, it's part of the improvements. So it basically goes A1A over to Ridgewood. That is the portions that's in the CRA. That's about 1500 feet of the total 2000 linear foot of the project. And then the remaining portion would be Ridgeway to Fillmore to the beach end. I'm not to Fillmore, uh, Fillmore to the beach end. <clears throat> and in the entire area would have uh, underground permeable pavers or underground exfiltration where we can link them and connect them uh, so that we can, uh, again, abate flooding in the highest incident areas, especially around Orange on Fillmore. This is the cross section. This has not changed. This is exactly what you saw back in April and previously, where the, uh, this kind of gives a highlight of some of the improvements. And really the cross section that I want you to understand or, or, or kind of hone in on, when we say exfiltration, trench and you can see it's those shaded boxes it's labeled there that connect in segments of Fillmore east to west those are ability to to capture stormwater and uh, reduce and hold flooding to so we don't send it downstream and uh, and create issues downstream and those look like concrete storm chambers there's an example of one on the right we're suggesting using a storm trap the storm trap is because it has a concrete structure and it's ashto rated so that you can get it closer to the road and have it vehicular loaded. So it's not gonna be impacted by driving over that. It can get all the way up to even as close as into the sub base of the road. And what that allows us to do is to get as much storm volume up because you've got a high water table. Your seasonal high water table, generally based on the geotechnical reports we have right now range from three to five feet. We have geotechnical reports done on the Civic Hub master plan for some incidents we had over there on the tennis courts. We've also got geotechnical reports from the, the rain gardens we've done right up here at the, at the library. And those indicate that we're about four feet of seasonal high water. So that allows us some volume above that because the stormwater and the permanent agencies make us have some separation and this type of system, this storm trap system is our recommended use, gives us the ability to have the most volume above that seasonal high water, but almost into the roadway bed. So we can drive on top of it, make it really resilient. So that's why we're kind of looking at that. I just wanted to highlight that on the cross section. <clears throat> Here's a couple of the highlights. This is actually in our scope of work that you probably have a copy of. Um, and I just wanted to highlight a couple of the big major elements. Again, it's 1,540 linear feet of Fillmore within the CRA and then 540 feet outside of the CRA and those fees that were outlined in your summary um, are intended for this all to be designed at one time. The entire design would be 2,000 linear feet, but we're just highlighting it because of different funding sources. There, there would... Um, not be any potable water main uh, uh, upsizing right now. Uh, we'll do coordination because those are a separate utility provider by a separate agency. Um, we will work, the systems are, uh, you can kind of work around and those are potable waters under pressure so we'll be able to work through that. We're not rely reliant on them being gravity fed. Uh, reclaimed water main is uh, included in this scope. So we would get those requirements from the city, from the end user, and we would design those in for future uses. Uh, and we, we know in, in conversations with some end users there on Fillmore, 
uh, specifically those townhomes, that, those four townhomes there, that they would like to tap into those kinds of things. So that would be something that all of the residents or all of the pro parcels along that area would have access to as a part of this. Uh, underground exfiltration is absolutely um, evaluated. Um, I will mention that it would be wonderful if we were able to look at this entire corridor plus the Civic Hub stormwater for phase one, and we can talk about that later, but I think it's important for us to think about it holistically because it is a tied together system. We're only, we're only designing a piece of it, but, it, but it's great when you can look at it as a system uh, so that you can make these adjustments and get the biggest bang for your buck from not only the permitting, but also from the constructability of, of make sure we're, we're hand in, in hand there. And it will be, uh, the design will include uh, the replacement of the vitrified clay, so your sanitary sewer will be redesigned, which is great. That's a gravity system. We're gonna be able to go back to this cross section. You'll see it's highlighted there to the right. So we wanna make sure that we have both separation between the sanitary sewer, the storm trap, the exfiltration system, the storm drainage. You can see that big circle there kind of in the middle of the, of the picture, as well as any potable water lines, electric lines, reclaimed lines, so we can have separation and identify where each of these are within the street cross section. We'll also evaluate raised intersections. Raised intersections can be great traffic calming devices. They can be great pedestrian connectors. So all of the locations along uh, Fillmore where it crosses Poinsettia and Orange and, and Ridgewood, uh, we're gonna evaluate how we can raise those, create some traffic calming measures, at, at, at the very least create some pedestrian awareness that says this is a pedestrian location, slow down traffic. Uh, in those areas. And, and grading will be very important because we don't want to exacerbate any flooding or cause other flooding or back up uh, into those areas, but that will be a part of the design. And then, and then lastly, communi uh, cohesive community engagement. <clears throat> we've partnered with you, and, and honestly, we've been very um, thankful for your engagement, allowing Kimley Horn to be a part. Of. I should have said that right up front. We, we have felt so partnered with staff and the board and council uh, because you've allowed us to come here and, and have dialogue. And, and we feel great value in that because that's where we think the dialogue happens the best and we figure out the solution together. Uh, because you have responsibilities, we have responsibilities. And so I should have started off with that, but, but thank you for allowing us to be here and to be engaged in such a way to uh, we want to see stuff built, <laughs> you know, just like the rain gardens and some other things. So anyway, I, I think the ability to have community, a cohesive community engagement, and that's why, again, it's a later agenda item, but for us to do and look at the stormwater for the Civic Hub would be a savings for the city because we can do that all at once, right? We can talk about these as a system, and it's going to be less expensive if we think about it and do it all at once as, as opposed to wrapping up one project and then putting up and then coming back and identifying another area. So there has been some economies of scale that we've incorporated into that. Thank you, Scott. And um, Mr. Chair and the board, I just want to remind you the, the expenditures proposed here are, are from the current 23-24 fiscal year budget. This is not tapping into next year's budget for this expense. So uh, if the board so chooses, if it pleases the board, you could approve items 3A and B, or Scott can answer questions, I can answer questions, but um, I know we're being short on time here. Yes, council, uh, we're at 557, closing in on two minutes here. Any questions at this time? When would we, um, yeah, I think we have a six o'clock uh, start time. Um, I don't even know if we have, if they're, do you think they would be quick enough? Probably not, so I'll Does this, if action is not taken tonight, it would not be until the next CRA board meeting? Well, how would that work, John? And the, with the implications for the budget? Could you? 
the actual uh, overview or the agenda cover. So <clears throat> these are expenditures that were being um, done for this year, right? right? Hmm. These actions have already taken place. Yeah. The, the approval is what's being considered tonight. The the approval is being considered, but is this you know this is for this is for is this the approval for next year? Is this no. part of next year's budget? No, this is approval for an expenditure from this year's budget to pay for something that's not it's done at serve. What's that serve? Go ahead. It's currently budgeted for the 23-24 fiscal year, and it's under the budget number. They okay. produced a proposal to get this product before this year ends. Oh, okay. As long as it's done by um, 30 September and the services have been completed, then they could be in this year's budget. So I think what the mayor was asking is whether or not, if this wasn't approved here, this has to be approved uh, before 1 October. Right. Right. So that would be the answer, yeah. Can I make a motion then? Yeah, I'm, I think I'm just confused. If it's already in the budget, why do we have to approve it? It's CRA budget expenditure. I, I can't sign a contract for over $20,000. So, oh, this is to, to authorize you to sign an agreement with Kimley Horn and Associates. Yes, right. This amount yeah. of a pre budgeted yes, item. I, okay, got it. Thank you. Board Member Davis? Make a motion to approve, I guess, SY 2023 2024 CRA budget A and B. I'll second. Got a motion by Board Member Davis, second by <coughs> Vice Chair Kellum. Any further discussion? I, yeah, my, my disc, I think I, I'm okay with this if it was the, the budgeted amount, and if there are any questions or issues, we can circle back. So. Any further items? City Clerk. Board Member Davis. Four. Board Member Jackson. Four. Vice Chair Kellum. Four. Chair Morrison. Four. Board Member Willis. Four. Scott, thank you so much. Appreciate it. And the Kimley Horn team. Okay, so that brings this back to the agenda. Item number four is where we are. In yep, the resolution last item. number four to approve the CRA budget. Uh, can, uh, we're at 6.01 p.m. It's, uh, actually, the resolution item we've already done, uh, sir. It's item four, which is the, the Kimley Horn pro design proposal for the Civic Hub. This was already budgeted in the It's time. already budgeted, too. Yes, the first phase of the Civic Hub, which is the underground store, storage stormwater. If I may, Mr. Manager. Or yes, Board. please, Scott. And when I refer to the two projects, that's what I was referring to. So okay. it's the underground portion of the Civic Hub and the design for Fillmore and the, the, uh, the benefit of doing them say at the same time. Community engagement design is cheaper when we just look at everything. And this is just for the undergrounding of the phase one portion of the Civic Hub. My comments on this have been, I think, consistent. Is that 149000 best spent on underground Civic Hub or right down the road at Orange and Johnson Avenue where the water is hitting on Anchorage Avenue? That's my, been my reservation. So, uh, the Thank fact you. is, if we don't do it at the same time, it's going to cost us more. So, I'd be f fine doing it with Orange Avenue at the Orange and Johnson intersection where that water's going. Uh, it's just one block away. Um, serious flooding or any other targeted areas on the map of vulnerability. And so, and I have concerns because we still don't know the results of the tidal valve yet. And I would really like to see that before we start looking at where to put this, you know, it, as you say, if it was down where there's water, um, that's a concern for me. My concern is if we don't do it, we're not taking advantage of property the city owns and we need passive systems 
because mechanical systems will fail. Uh, and this gives us the, the highest opportunity to capture stormwater. This $149,350 is in the CRA budget. And when would this project begin? Uh, this one, because it's in the current fiscal year budget, just like item three, um, if, the, if, if this is approved, they would begin design of phase one of the Civic Hub stormwater immediately. Before Fillmore? Uh, I think together you're saying, right, we Scott? We do them simultaneously. And as a, as a reminder, I believe that Johnson is still within the Center Street Basin. Yes. It's south of Fillmore. Yes. If we're adding additional capacity on Fillmore and allowing it to go into storm chamber vaults, Mm -hmm. and allowing to keep it at the top of the system and put it into exfiltration below grade, it may improve downstream flooding. Now, we'll validate that with some of the... Uh, I look to staff to make sure... <laughs> I don't want to put you on the spot, but I'll look to, I was looking at Matt. <laughs> we will validate that or evaluate that as part of this process, because we're going to be looking at the entire Center Street Basin, Basin and saying, okay, as we do fill more and as we create additional storage volume areas, it will create, it'll pop off into the Civic Hub underground before it goes downstream. It may. No, yeah. I, well, the underground four, no, it may improve. I, I don't know all the conditions, but it will underground it will pop off and go into the civic hub before it releases to go downstream which may improve it there's Correct. no guarantee there's no well guarantee. Yeah. Yeah. yeah yes ma'am that was my reservation is the the civic hub is not a priority right now for this community fixing the flooding in those problematic areas are and so that all that energy that's going in under the civic hub i think probably would positively impact all downstream, but is it the highest best thing for the buck for that 150,000? If you're on orange, if you went one block down and sh you know, we knew that the Civic Cub would provide a greater impact than doing the same improvements proposed on Fillmore of just orange. Actually, those projects are closer together and economies, I think, run together. That's. I can't remain uh, support this if my principal was understanding a ranking of these projects of some sort, and we have not been able to, I think, establish that. So in front of the home improvements, like we were showing for Fillmore, may, but I think we, we can see how the, the, the probability is much higher there. And um, I would, if this money's in the funds, I mean, between now and the next meeting, uh, can we? Can they just expand that uh, to, to other areas in the presidential streets that are more problematic? Can I? the money could be added to the presidential streets effort? And then that's still if Civic Hub is in fact the best, and maybe there's other reasons, then that would not implicate the ability to go right back and use yeah. it. Yeah. Under the president's yes, name, it's not that that 150k is not restricted to the Civic Hub. If you want to use it in another place for a capital project, for your other sewer needs, whatever, or stormwater needs, then you could do that. You do not have to exclusively use that 150k for the Civic Hub. You do not. But we can. It's all within the same. Right. So I would think that if there's between now and when this project begins a look at some of those other intersections and if they can't be used, I would put it in that general category and... May, may I speak? I have a question for Kimberly Horn. Yeah, uh, that's okay, sorry. Um, when you did a survey for this and you studied all this area, you determined that the Civic Hub would be the best spot to do that. And you've explained, you know, going downhill and stuff like, or excuse me, You've, but it is Civic Hub would be the make the most sense financially 
flood water wise and everything to do it with Fillmore, correct? We believe it's the most beneficial to create an underground opportunity at the highest point of your basin. Uh, Johnson and Orange actually looks like that goes towards, goes north to Buchanan and then down Center Street and out. So uh, anything that we can do on the Center Street, which is the Buchanan Street, before it gets into that system, and the pump station is going to be a part of that. Uh, so it's a little hard to talk about Johnson and Orange, which is at the very bottom of the thing. But we've, we've looked at hyd hydraulically connecting the basin to an underground facility to remove almost uh, four times. You only need about 20,000 cubic feet of storage to, to serve the Civic Hub if you were to totally build it out. We can create an extra 60,000 of underground storage to handle your stormwater. Uh, so we believe it's a very viable option. Well, then I, I would go with what Kimberly Horn says. This is nothing new. We've discussed this for a while now. So I'm going to put a motion. I, I take you for your word. I trust you. Um, we've discussed it for, what, a year, two, two years now, that this is our best option. So I don't have a problem with it. And I'd like to put a motion to approve FY 2023-24. I'll second. Got a motion by Board Member Davis, second by Board Member Willis. My uh, discussion is, um, I didn't hear Scott say that. Uh, your question, he, uh, I did hear him say that at the highest point of the basin, if you can find the, a quantity, which 20,000 um, or roughly, that makes total sense to me. But um, to say it's the best way to spend that 150000 I did not hear that. Um, and we may not know the answer to that. But if that is shown, I think, to be the best, I'm all for it. Today, I think we put it in the fund. I would oppose what you're recommending because it's designating it to be used in that particular parcel. That I, We've been saying the same thing, I think every time for all these years, the concern, and I don't think those have been Not overcame. we haven't, maybe you have, but I've been fine with it. But I, I wanna call the question, or I'd like to call the motion. You have something to say? Oh, Scott, please. No, 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 I don't mean to rebut, I just wanna put a finer point on it. Um, we found even assisting the city with C5, um, the idea of having a regional stormwater facility is very important. I don't know, there isn't another location that could house an underground stormwater in the Center Street District. I'm confident in that. So could we do it in another street? Maybe, but another street would have more vitrified clay, more coordination with other locations. So. There is no other location within the Center Street base, and I'm confident in saying that there's no underground stormwater vault location that we can get this bang for the buck. So, on on, but on under the streets, it, it, there what? will be under the streets when we get to those streets. But those streets are going to have a higher cost to implement, as opposed to the cost to implement something in a public park of property that you already own with the order of magnitude of that kind of volume. Do you recall how much volume we have in the exfiltration within Fillmore alone? Within Fillmore alone, we would have about 20,000. So the Fillmore volume alone is nowhere near, not, not a 20th of the volume that you could create in the Civic Hub because you have so much open space, right? So we've targeted it in those areas. And where we targeted phase one, we've let, we've, we targeted phase one as your uh, parking lot area here where we had the food trucks and then this connected sidewalk along down some frontage because you know you would wanna do something and close off that street so you would connect to that space and then the open space. 
we've left future phases underneath the uh, pickleball and tennis courts because we don't know what's going to happen there. We've left off the area uh, along Taylor because there's more vitrified clay and more sanitary sewer that you would have to update. But we have included some areas along Poinsettia that could be tied in and on Fillmore we would have uh, on street parking as even a, a tertiary area. So in phase one, I'm confident saying that there's no volume in the center street basin that is as large as property you already have. I don't know if that helps your decision or gives you more clarity. I'm not trying to rebut, I'm just trying to give you more. It, it is helpful, I think, to know that, that for underground options, that's it. And it's, for me, it's, are there other options? And um, thank you. Mm -hmm. Board member? Um, for Jackson? me, I don't want to lock the funds in in one spot. I'm not saying we, that that's not a good option, putting it there with the tanks, but there's no reason to lock it to that option because, as we said and as city manager told us, we would be able to use those if we put a lot it for, for storm water. We would be able to use those if that's what we decide is the best option for getting the water off the street downstream. But I'm concerned with that water on the street downstream mm -hmm. more than holding, you know, I want to know that this is going to absolutely impact that because we have that flooding issue now. Mm -hmm. So for me, if we can use the funds in either way with and get more information as Kimberly Horn moves forward and find out which way gives us the biggest bang for our buck as far as getting the water off the streets, then if the holding tanks are that, we've got the ability to use it for that. Mm -hmm. But if the holding tanks aren't for that, you know, aren't a certainty for removing that water, then we can still use it on the presidential street itself. So to me, it makes sense to be able to say it's for presidential street stormwater with the thought that the best option may be the tanks. But why tie it to to just the, the civic hub? Because that way we can't. We're going to have to do it that way, whether it's the best option or not. Thank you. Um, I have a couple questions. Um, so the engineering, it's an engineering design. So we don't really know what what is possible there until we get the engineering design. It, I mean, you guys know how much it will hold. Um, and this was budgeted last year for, for this, right? Mm -hmm. um, I just, uh, you know, we talked about the rain garden and all the other things that we're implementing to try to help get the water off the streets. Um, so, you know, this is part of that. Uh, I just think it's important. I mean, I understand what you're all saying about, you know, we don't want to designate all the money to that place right now. But if I think we still have the flooding on Johnson and all that, we need to address that in the, in the next year's budget and let this go forward to do phase one. Doesn't mean that we have to go through with it, but we're not going to know until we get the design and, and the ideas. Um, you know, and I would rather see it happen now than do the Fillmore thing and then down the road six months from now say, okay, let's look at the Civic Hub. Um, I, I can see combining the two. We definitely need to do Fillmore. Um, I just think, you know, it's budgeted from last year and we're not going to know until we get an engineering design that we should move forward with the 149 and then address the, you know, Johnson Avenue. I mean, um, Tim has come up with other ideas that we talked about for addressing um, the flooding in these places with a, not a lot of money, little projects that will make a difference. I think that would be really important to, to do as well, but to get this going and started. I mean, doesn't mean we have to do it, but we're not gonna know until we get a design, so. That's my opinion. Mr. Mayor? Yes. Anytime we can remove water 
above is going to make it more usable downstream. More will be able to be handled. If we can get it out of the system upstream, downstream is more useful. Too often, we are looking at solving just today's problem, not tomorrow's problem. We need to solve the future. This is not going to get easier. It's not going to, we're not going to have less problems with flooding. We have to look at solutions for the future, not just today. And I think this is a future solution. But that's all I've got to say. I think we have a, a motion. Yeah, can, I was going to say, can we? We're under the discussion for it. Any further discussion? Mayor, Mr. Chair, if I could just clarify the motion. I believe the motion is to approve the CRA budget expenditure in amount not to exceed $149,350 for this engineering design of phase one of Civic Hub to Kimley Horn. Yes. Thank you. I don't think the Civic Hub is a stormwater future solution that's the highest priority, and I adamantly think we deserve to know how this ranks compared to the other projects, and I will fully support it, but we have not seen that, and if it can't be provided, um, this is a project that we did, we pushed out, it was acquired, the property was acquired, very controversial. And I think the stormwater piece is certainly has merit. I hope we do those stormwater improvements, but um, the future at Cape Canaveral, I think, is is absolutely uh, what we are focused on. And I I'm talking about tomorrow. Yes, for Johnson Avenue and Anchorage Avenue because it's impacting them today because of prior inconsiderations or missed opportunities to work on the problems we're dealing with today. So that's uh, it. the motion on the floor and the second is to essentially approve it as written. I don't mm -hmm. see any changes. Can it, There's not any further discussion. So if we decide not to spend this 149, 350, do, where do you think that we could and what would we do in on Anchorage or on Johnson immediately with $149,000? I'd rather we... put that money in over in those areas, whatever they recommend, and then find out, like you were saying, we wouldn't know, but I'd rather risk it there. The Mead and Hunt study had some recommendations. I think we fulfilled some of those. Um, we can fund this Civic Hub project under the same title. What we're doing is we're not taking it away from the Civic Hub. We're just calling it Presidential Streets. And if the Civic Hub is the leading project, it, then the city manager, I think, uh, can move forward with that. I just don't want to earmark it specifically and only for the Civic Hub. That, to me... Um, I'm just, you know, it, it's not like we're going to start ripping up the, the tennis courts and all that. I think this is just an engineering thing for underground and, and the storage area. Um, I agree that I don't think the Civic Hub is a priority itself, you know, the above ground, mm -hmm. but the underneath to me is, and if it helps alleviate things downstream... Um, I think that would be worth the 149,000. Um, at this point, that's not a lot of money, <laughs> you know, and it was budgeted. Oh, excuse me, I've had my hand up. Again, I've, I'd like to speak instead of come next. I think we have listened to Kimberly Horn. I think we uh, should take their advice on what we need to do. We've discussed it. We know how everybody's opinion or how they feel about it. We don't need to try to convince everybody to switch their vote or do this or do that. So I would like to call the vote. Motions had, has been made. The second's been made. Respectfully, discussion follows. So if there's not any further discussion. I just have one thing. We had, re we had pr previously, just recently, approved the 
pilot project to do to remove part of the right of way on Magnolia, 200, 275 linear square feet or feet. Was it, how much was it? It wasn't that much, but you gave us a price for that amount. That price for that amount was around $150,000, 140. And to me, this is why if we earmark it for presidential streets and then we wait and see what that does, we, we may see more success with using that on one of those projects, an additional one to get water off the street now and I understand the planning for going forward and that kind of thing. However, we have problems right now we need to eliminate with stormwater. And we haven't seen how all of these things are going to impact that. And I'm hearing it may. So to me, if we have it earmarked where it can be used either way, that is a wise decision because that way we're not tied into using it in one spot. I would like to see, you know, how one of those projects will go. We've got that budgeted to be done. And that's $140,000 that might help right around the cost of this. And we have other areas in the city identified to get that water off the street where the pavement goes right up to the curve and there's total runoff into our storm system that ends up backing up onto the presidential street areas. So I don't, I don't understand why we have to be, since we pushed the Civic Hub out a year, I don't understand why we have to be so set in stone that we say it is for only this. That doesn't make sense to me. I think it makes more sense to have it as a general use where we could use it either way and be flexible with it, with the, the, the amount. And that's all I had to say. Board Member Davis? There is no 100% guarantee that anything's gonna work when we try it. So you can say whatever, but there's no guarantee. They have said this is the best solution to the situation. We, yes, we have flooding problems. Nothing is getting fixed tomorrow. So I'm gonna take and listen to the professionals and, and take them at their word. So nothing is guaranteed, nothing's getting done tomorrow. This is like a council member, no, board member Willis said, this is for the future. You haven't been here for a lot of the discussions in the past. So uh, you know, I think we should go with their recommendation. So maybe they can take the vote. And, and from the past prior to you, there was a recommendation from Mead and Hunt from professionals. There's been excellent recommendations from Kimley Horn, and we've got recommendations from our former city manager. And so I just want to state that I have not heard that it is the, the best project. It is one of the best options, if not the only place to put high underground st stormwater, but in fairness to Kimley Horn, they've looked at a big area, and in these specific areas, if they rank and, and it ends up coming out, that's okay. But we ha you're, you're stating things that I haven't heard. And you're talking about things that, that no, one's, no one's asking for it to be 100% correct. She said there's no 100%. But anyway, can we call the vote? No, she said guaranteed. Okay, we don't and, have guarantee and, on anything. Yeah, I, I understand. You got a chance to speak. So let's be respectful up here. If you would like to speak, you do not need to raise your hand the whole time unless you choose to. I will recognize you, and I do no, see No, I raise my hand to get recognized. You're free to, to hold your hand up, but I'm telling you I do see you, and I will make sure that, that you're heard. Is there any other discussion? I, again, not taking this out of the Civic Hub, uh, just keeping it on stormwater for sure. What if Fillmore goes over, and we're 150000 short of actually doing what we wanted there? So in my opinion, if we must earmark it to something specific, it should be to that. But I think it's best to keep the flexibility Can we on call it. the vote? And this is, absolutely. I'm explaining why I would not support it the way it's written today. So thank you. And thank you very much, Scott. City Clerk. Board Member Davis. Or Board Member Jackson. Against. Vice Chair Kellum. Against. Chair Morrison. Against. Board Member Willis. Four. Resolution fails three to two. Thank you. 
Mr. Chair, if yes. it helps, uh, just to dispense with this item, maybe it might be appropriate for an motion to um, designate the $149,350 towards presidential streets and stormwater for next year. I make a motion to move that to stormwater for next year. I'll second. Got a motion by board member Jackson, second by vice chair Kellum. Any further discussion? Seeing none, city clerk. Board member Davis? Four. Board member Jackson? Four. Vice chair Kellum? Four. Chair Morrison? Four. Board member Willis? Against. It was the first vote on that to count the roll. Is it three to two? City clerk to confirm the vote count? Four to one. Four to, one. Four to one. Thank you. She passes four to one, the resolution, excuse me. Um, that concludes our meeting. Yes, Any further items from? Yes, sir. Any further discussion, closing? Okay. <coughs> meeting adjourned. We're right.